The structure was okay, but darker color. Dark oh, that's terrible. Color, okay. And the dark color means reduced oxygen delivery. Oxygen delivery because the cells are a bit crowded. That, no, that but at is least there is still some movement. And let me see, I may find an area which is in this no, That is severe area. angulation. Uh, that is very yes. unhealthy. Yes. So, oh, drinking the water will make it better. And also, taking minerals, electrolytes, maybe electrolyte, uh, mineral drops in the water to have the. Um, have to uh, rebuild that electrical charge. Yeah, so the, the negative ionic. Exactly, exactly. So there's going to be um, dispersing and, and talk about wake up call. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just make sure that uh, that first thing in the morning when you wake up, drink a couple of glasses of water with lemon juice, maybe or maybe maybe with some chlorophyll. Uh, warm water would be fine, or maybe putting some of the uh, yeah uh, putting some of the alkalizing powder mixtures into the water and drinking it first thing in the morning, having your kidneys flush the excess acidity as well. So that's what we are also seeing. Acidity remains in the system because the kidneys are not able to flush uh, quickly enough. So dehydration. I'm circling the uh, the major key points. And of course, you're getting the grading between one and five. So five is the grade for the low, for the pumping. And there is also one white blood cell, which is the eosinophil, which is indicating food sensitivities as well as probably the presence of uh, parasitic activity. But so far, it's only one, so I'm not concerned about you know seeing one odd piece. But there is this round uh, little microbial parasite? Oh, yeah, we can say parasitic activity, um, meaning that also originating from the intestinal tract, a small lymphocyte, which is okay, part of your immune system, ready to fight viruses and bacteria. Some undigested food particles as well, meaning the, um, uh, the action of the digestive system is a bit sluggish, as well as the possibility of permeability and leakiness of those undigested foods to the bloodstream. Here we have a deformed uh, red blood cell, so meaning the membranes are stiff and also fragile. Also the need for omega-3 fatty acids, particularly. Um, the store carries the AOR products today. Of course they do AOR products. Yeah, I, haven't, um, I have not looked at that specifically, but I'm sure they do. Okay, all right, all right. So here is also, um, here is also that uh, allergy related eosinophil. Eosinophils are the ones that are in response to, uh, form in response to uh, yeast, parasites, food sensitivities and allergies. And these are the undigested food particles. There's a minor fibrin, um, uh, fibrin um, accumulation taking place, meaning also the congestion of the lymphatic system and a bit of a stress on the liver too. There is also another lymphocyte, quite small, so they are kind of um, young and not really specialized yet, uh, which is which is okay. Seems like every cell is a, a, mm -hmm. is a, is a mm -hmm. and There's together. also a few that have uh, the targets in the center, meaning the iron and hemoglobin concentration in those are on the lower end. And of course, in order for me to have an average, I would need to see them separately. This one is perfect, so that's great. This one is the target with the low iron and hemoglobin and the donut. There's also another one here, and underneath there's another one which is covering. There's also this little um, deformed ring. So making sure that you are getting enough protein, enough iron, and vitamin B12. That's um, kind of like a spiky cell. It's called echinocyte, which is either drying out and dying, or because the membranes are not insulating enough and the fluid is sucked out, and it's it's shrinking or what it's called crenation of the cell. Could be also due to free radical damage, free radical activity as well. So so far, one out of the million is quite normal. We will see if there is more. So if I see more in other parts, that like there is another one, there is another one. So also there is a slightly higher free radical activity taking place, and there is also that other donut. So these are just a couple of um, kind of warning indications Makes that sense. some um, some nutrients are on the low low end or low supply or the storage is running out. Are you vegetarian? Um, then, no, or kind of. Uh, almost? I would say I, I eat meat maybe twice, three times a month. A month? Okay. All right. Which is okay. Just make sure that you're getting enough protein from from plant sources or vegetarian sources, which is totally absolutely fine. And if you are not eating animal products. 
on a daily basis, then absolutely you're considering iron supplementation and B12 supplementation. Because that is more challenging to get from plant-based foods. And even, even the iron and plant-based foods are often chelated or bound to certain um, components of the plant and it's not easy to release that bond. And that's why it's harder for the body to digest and absorb um, absorb iron from plant-based uh, foods. But, uh, so I'm looking at probably grade three, four of those. And the B12, so far the B12 indication is not severe. That would be shown by large cells, excessively large cells, that uh, would be definitely indicating shortage of, of, of the B12. And uh, storage running low. I'm also seeing a couple of fermentation indicators as well. And here we have an activated lymphocyte, meaning it has been activated into fighting producing antibodies, which is also just absolutely fine. And, um, and also more of those targeted cells. So hopefully, I will see some at least these ones are not in a huge rouleau, so we can see the structure. These are fine, these are okay. And there's also one which is quite small. So also when we have smaller cells, that's an indication for iron um, deficiency. There's also that damaged cell, that's perfect. So we have good, you have good cells. It's just a matter of, of making them flowing freely and, and deliver the oxygen more effectively. So, um, the dehydration, acidity, uh, you don't drink coffee or tea or any of those um, diuretic substances. I, I drink uh, tea and just recently I've been drinking coffee the last two mornings. Okay, alright, alright. So just make sure that you're replenishing the water because if you drink coffee, it flushes um, water through the kidneys and you need two more, two extra glasses of water for every cup of coffee. Um, these are fine cells, so that's great. So we are seeing a few of these um, spiky. Uh, damaged cells and here we have a white blood cell again which is a neutrophil so that's that's fine that's the function is fine you can see the movement of the cell and it's trying to clear some of the debris which is originating mostly from the digestive tract as partially or undigested particles so that's fine And here is the fermentation, kind of like the gases that are formed from yeast activity. Mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of microbial activity around that as well. Not necessarily. It could be the fat from the coconut what are those? milk. Those are fat particles from your breakfast. Okay. So those are, those are not uh, considered to be pathogenic or not considered to be even microbial or parasitic. That's a small uric acid crystal, which is also just showing that the kidneys are not flushing uh, the acids. And um, that, that is also a uric acid, but that's, that's the microbial. So there's a slight overgrowth of the intestinal um, uh, bacteria that will end up in the bloodstream for a short while and eventually they are taken care of by the immune system as well as the liver's filtration ability. So but now, now I've been taking acid off this as well. Too. Great, yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. Would that be found in the blood? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. Acidophilus is never found in the Just blood. Say, ooh, what's um, that? It is acting in the intestinal tract. That's a white, that's a neutrophil. So that is. The that's speed. eating right now. Uh, it is going after something. So that is the speed I like to see of, of neutrophil uh, activity. And there is probably uh, some some foreign substances, undigested food, as well as the fermentative byproducts of yeast activity, which is probably going to be cleared by, by the neutrophil, or at least attempted um, that's cool. to be cleared. Yeah. So those, that's great. So overall, we have good uh, neutrophil activity or good white blood cell activity. So the immune system is able to able to fight, and it has a great force because it can go through the congestion even unless there's a tremendous congestion that prevents its movement. And of course, we just want to get rid of the yeast uh, activity or balancing it. So the probiotics are great for that. Sometimes that's, that's a yeah, that's a quite stiff. It's kind of just stiff. And here is, um, I think it's like this could be a, either a collection of uric acid or it could be even a scratch in the glass, but usually a scratch is quite in one line. So I'm, I'm wow, looking at the pretty. possibility of, of um, uric acid. And, um, but the cells here are okay, except of course they are a bit clumpy. And that is what we want to see movement. Of course, and it's a nice, that's like a nice uh, aura. That was a nice, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
even more. So There's still hope. <laughs> for you, probably the biggest challenge is keeping your intestinal tract um, in the proper bacterial balance mm -hmm. and getting rid of the fermentation taking place by excess of yeast organisms. So the sugars, the carbohydrates, or the feeders, cutting them out or down, limiting them, and also making sure that you eat very slow, chew your food, so there's not going to be undigested food for fermentation in the colon. And the movements of the colon are regulated, at least one or two regular daily eliminations, so no fermentation remains and no putrefaction remains. But yeah, that, that actually is, you can, you can even probably hold your camera a bit longer there. That is almost like champagne or beer. You know, when, when yeast is eating or feeding on carbohydrates, let's say when we make beer, I don't make it, but when they make beer, yeah. it's the barley, is it barley and hops yeah. mixture? And it's fermenting by the activity of yeast. yeast yeah. And then alcohol is the byproduct, and the gases, the carbon dioxide, the carbonation is the byproduct. That's the same in our intestines. Yeast is feeding on sugars, carbohydrates, and producing gases and alcohols and that will be absorbed into the blood very easily and eventually of course processed by the liver, the liver's detox mechanisms but if people have too much then it creates liver congestion and it creates symptoms locally as well as systemically. So that's the um, probably the biggest uh, challenge of most of my clients, this whole yeast overgrowth affecting all systems. And here we have that excessively large cell which, uh, which is the indication for B12 deficiency. It's only one of the cells, so it's not to say that right now you are in a B12 deficiency state, but just to show you that that is what red blood cells will look like if, if the B12 storage is running low. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see what else we show So here you see, as time goes by, often there's more and more accumulation of the bubbly, uh, bubbly gases. Uh, gases, yes, yes. So that is um, something that you need to work on, okay? Probiotics are great to have to keep the balance, but probiotics are not powerful enough to eliminate the yeast. So you may even think of some anti-yeast cleansing protocols and just get rid of the overload and make sure that your diet contains um, plant fiber, vegetables, less sugar, less carbohydrates, less grains, and of course making sure you get enough protein. So that's what, um, what I'm seeing. Just overall, how old are you, Justin? 25. 25, okay. So you, you, your digestive system should be still at its peak activity. And um, just make sure you chew your food thoroughly before you swallow. So you're not having any, you know, like partially digested food particles as well. Chew your food to a liquid before you swallow, as well as don't drink with your food. Mm -hmm. you don't have any. Stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and drink your water in between your meals. All right. So wow. go. let me just see if there's anything else. Uh, not too many of the parasites, but more of the yeast of the Do you get gassy or, or I do get bloated? Gassy. Yeah. yeah. So that's not that's bloated gases, so much, but gassy. But gassy. Yeah. So you have to pass. Uh, um, yeah. Beer paying at all? Like, uh, no? No, 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 not so much. Yeah. So that's also the gases that have to leave the body, which are produced. So, yeah. Okay. Do you crave anything? Do yeah, you anything? Yeah. I have sugar cravings. Sugar cravings. For sure. Okay. So those are the little buggers making you eat the sugar. So <laughs> give, me, give me sugar. Exactly, exactly. And the more you eat, the more you crave. Mm -hmm. So eventually cutting it down. And often I find that people crave sugar if they don't get enough protein. Especially I always recommend people get their protein dosage in the morning in order to balance the blood sugar for the day. If they don't get the protein in the morning, they will crave more in the second half of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they will have the afternoon hypoglycemia, higher in a sitting state. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get your sufficient at least 15 grams of protein in the morning, 15-20 grams of protein. Even if it's from a protein shake, supplement, or... Like Sun Warrior protein. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's a Sun Warrior, that's, that's a protein. But everywhere. don't put any sugar, I mean, don't put juice or just, just the protein and, I don't know, maybe almond milk. But because I find people make these smoothies out of protein and they put a lot of sugar, I mean, fruits and yeah. fruit juice. Yeah. 